Hello everyone, uh, this is Sami Said from the CTS Net and we're here at the EX uh, annual meeting in Vienna. And I'm honored to uh, have with me um, Dr. Victoria uh, Weixler. Uh, she's a resident in the final year in her training uh, at the Berlin uh, uh, German Heart Institute. Uh, hello, Victoria. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I just want to uh, congratulations on your talk and you're also a panelist in one of the sessions yes. about uh, resident training. Yes. So um, tell us a little bit about your uh, training in uh, um, uh, Germany and uh, how many years and uh, what's your experience so far? Okay, so um, I actually studied in Austria. I did medical school in Austria and then um, I, I did my first surgical experience in Austria in adult cardiac surgery. This is usually also here in Germany or Austria the way um, of you usually start content to go through adults first. And then I did um, two years of research at Boston Children's Hospital. Um, so I did a break and then returned um, to my residency program and um, from, from a very early point of my career I decided to do congenital so for me it was clear that I have to return to a center that is focused on congenital heart surgery so and I decided for Berlin. Oh. And how many years uh, uh, total your, uh, your residency? Um, so I, I did two years in Austria and um, so now I'm another um, four and a half years in, mm. in Germany, so around six years. Um, with and the that's paper. without the research? Without the research, yeah. So the usual eight, ten yeah. years before yeah. <laughs> you... Uh, and um, it seems like you're uh, moving to a congenital fellowship yes. in uh, Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. So congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your talk. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about the congenital uh, uh, complex transposition mm -hmm. and how to avoid LVOT obstruction. So can you tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about um, so um, obviously this is one of the most complex um, fields in congenital heart surgery. Um, we um, do quite um, a bit of this very complex cases. Um, so um, we decided to, um, to sum up our cases and um, we obviously asked, our, asked the question if um, there, is, there are differences between the different surgical techniques um, mm. in, in terms of RVOT but also LVOTOs um, and we we wanted to find an answer to this question. That was the originally aim of the study. Mm. And then um, we, we had a closer look and um, we divided the patients in um, arterial switch with um, LVOTO resection, um, half turn truncal switch, Nikaido and Rastelli. Mm. And um, so we had these four groups and um, we looked into survival, obviously. Um, we looked into early post-op complications um, and we also checked for um, midterm outcome in the sense of um, RVOTOs and LVOTOs coming up in the future. And uh, what did you find? Which technique is the best? <laughs> so I think it's very hard to answer. Um, obviously, um, a half turn truncal switch is a very complex procedure. Mm. Nika Ido as well. We actually found in our um, study that um, even though these procedures might take longer in the operating room, um, the especially um, early post-op outcome was the same in all the groups. And um, we found um, a very low rate um, of um, re-LVOTO and um, RVOTO, especially in that half-turn truncal switch group. Mm -hmm. We did, however, find um, a rather high rate of um, RVOTOs in the Nikaido and Rastelli groups, mm -hmm. which is not surprisingly because mm -hmm. we were not able to preserve the pulmonary valve. And uh, in your center, what do you use for reconstruction of the RVOT in Nikaido, for example? Um, I mean, depending on, on the size of the, of the child, um, different sizes of Contegra valves. Um, and but do you use a valve conduit? Is that what? Uh, um, yeah, usually, we, yeah, usually depending on the age of the, of the child, mm -hmm. um, a valve conduit. Mm -hmm. And um, in terms of um, your, uh, your training, um, what, um, what do you feel better about your training and what do you feel like you could have wished is there? Or um, I, mean, I think it's never ideal. <laughs> um, no matter uh, where you are, um, it's, it's a long and difficult way in order to become a congenital heart surgeon. Um, so I, I think I'm very lucky at the center 
that I am. Um, we do a lot of um, case sharing, actually. Mm -hmm. So um, you know that uh, a lot of cases are too delicate in order to have a resident do the entire case, but then um, we might um, do steps of the surgery. So um, in case you um, at some point have to do the entire case, um, it's, it's not that difficult because you sum up all the steps sum that you basically. have um, done before. So I think that this is a good way actually to um, to get future surgeon trained because um, obviously there are not that many cases for everybody mm. and um, only high volume centers can offer um, a certain amount of cases to mm. uh, residents and then yeah obviously um, the outcomes should be uh, good of and um, yeah. so there might that's, be an uh, attending. The same uh, issues everywhere and uh, it's even more challenging as you said when it comes to congenital training because yeah. of the outcomes because of the concern about it and because of the rarity of the cases so uh, at best um, most places will be resident doing part of the case but may not be all all yeah. the case um, and um, uh, you use a lot of simulation in during training um, I, I wish we did um, it, it's actually we do um, 3d printing but we don't have um, soft models we have um, rigid models um, just for better understanding of the surgery mm. um, so in these models you cannot really do surgical training. Um, obviously, um, at home, everybody um, tries to um, basically um, train and <laughs> to uh, to keep uh, yeah. Um, yeah, just uh, to keep up. But um, there's no actual way of like three D mm. um, learning mm. in such as in other centers, for example. I hope that um, I will get that experience in Toronto. Yeah, I, I'm sure you will. I mean, that's known for a lot of. Uh, uh, 3D printed models yeah. and actually do the operation on it. So yes. that, that takes a lot of stress during yes. the time of surgery itself. That yeah. could be very useful. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And um, in terms of um, how many residents in your program? Um, we have four. Four. Yeah. And um, uh, do uh, you, is there a requirement for a certain number of cases uh, for the board? Uh, so we have, um, we need to do a hundred of um, cases on hard lung machine in order to be um, um, ready to take the examination. Mm. And uh, your exam will be the German board or it will be European board? What will be the German board. Be the German board. <laughs> yeah. okay. there's, there's an option to also um, take the European mm. certification, but um, not at the moment. <laughs> mm. And uh, are you participating in any of the uh, learning uh, labs or anything uh, with um, simulation in the EX? Um, not this time, actually. I was um, very busy yeah. <laughs> preparing for my exam and uh, the talk, so yeah. not this time, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, uh, when is your exam? Um, it's on the 19th of October. Oh, so uh, good luck. Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> good luck on your exam. Thank you so much for uh, being here today. Thanks good luck so on your uh, talk tomorrow. We're yeah. looking forward to it and also the session about resident training. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.